Texas. Pandemic collusion. That's what's going on between the teachers union and the CDC to keep our kids out of school. The details will outrage you as we are reopening in most states, but in the blue states, they're beginning to release their grip on our lives. They will not even commit to opening up schools in September. Saying, I can't predict the future. Are you kidding? So the New York Post had this story, and it's stunning. It's And I mentioned it a little bit yesterday, but not enough. The Freedom of Information Act request came to the CDC as well as to the teachers' union. said, we would like to see these documents. We believe there's going to be a lot of consulting between the two. The CDC is emblematic of follow the science, the Joe Biden mantra. Now, tell me what the science is, and I'll react. That's the word. Well, what if the science is being influenced by the teachers' unions? Would that bother you? Well, if you look at it and read these interactions, it will bother you. Because it looks as though constantly you had Rochelle Walensky, the CDC director, come out and flat out just say, it is schools can safely reopen. Schools should safely reopen, she said about a month ago. And then two top teachers unions said, yeah, I don't think so. And then she said, well, they can. And the three-foot rule is in place, meaning you got the plexiglass, you got the spread, and you don't need six feet, three feet works. And guess what happened? In the areas where these unions are prevalent, where the unions are strong, they did not reopen. And in places like Los Angeles, they would open up the class and the teacher would be remote. This is unbelievable to me. But then when you see the interaction, it is flat out maddening. Because it shows the documents going back and forth and all the politeness. Uh, Thank you again for Friday's rich discussion about the forthcoming CDC guidelines. The teachers union president writes to uh, to Walensky. That's Randy Weingartner, of course. She's uh, forever thinking about uh, teachers, not students. She said, turns out. The teachers unions have gone from 4 million in 2006, where they gave to Democratic causes, to 43 million. So you think they got some leverage within the Democratic Party? Absolutely. On a February 1st email that was forwarded to Carol Johnson, the White House coronavirus testing coordinator, uh, these emails show this. Will McEntee, Associate Director of Public Engagement at the White House, quote, We are immensely grateful for your genuine desire to earn our confidence in your commitment to our partnership. Really? Partnership? The CDC should follow the science and we should respond, I thought. The lobbying paid off, at least two instances. Language suggested by the teachers union ended up in the documents sent out by the CDC. And it's part of the reason why there's no pressure from Joe Biden to open up. And I just cannot believe the audacity of the president to show up with his wife, who's allegedly a teacher, and go to a grammar school and a community college class and talk about the need to open up schools, knowing he's stopping from using, he's stopping schools from opening because he's refusing to use the power because they give so much money to the Democratic Party. Listen to some of this before I have to shut it off. Cut one. Safely reopen the majority of the K through eight schools was one of my top priorities in my first 100 days because there's so much that happens when they don't have the certitude and the and the, and the companionship and the familiarity of being with their friends. We say all those kids, well, they're all our children. They're all our children. And they are the kite strings that literally lift our national ambitions aloft. So we've got to invest in them, invest in our children to invest in the future. Really? How much are you investing in them? Uh, They should have booed you right out of the classroom. This is February 3rd. This is your CDC director, cut to. There is increasing uh, data to suggest that schools can safely reopen and that that safe reopening does not um, uh, suggest that teachers need to be vaccinated in order to reopen safely. I would also say that um, safe reopening of schools is not, um, that vaccination of teachers is not a prerequisite for safe reopening of schools. 30% of kids are not back in schools. 30% have some type of hybrid school situations. About 4% don't go back at all. And a lot of them get credit for a full day of school when they only go for about two and a half hours. That's the CDC directive February 3rd. We're May 4th right now, May 4th. And they will not even commit to next September. Because he's scared of the teachers unions. You're 78 years old. What do you care about lobbying groups? 78 years old and you can't show any leadership yet? Listen to this. 
He got $2 million from the teachers union to a pro-Biden super PAC. The AFF, the AFT, gave more than $14 million to liberal groups between 2019 and 2020. $23 million to liberal groups during the same time period, to, uh, to, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. And Randy Gard- uh, Weingarten, wonder why she has so much power? They wrote big checks. By the way, are you really going to the best interest of schools and students if you can afford to put that much money in the pockets of politicians? They have found that over 10,000 public school districts across the country that places with uh, place with strong teachers unions were statistically substantially more likely to not reopen their doors for in-person instruction. I love that the kids were a chance to respond. Now, this is not that easy to hear, but some kids, grade schoolers, were asked to respond about what they think about this virtual learning. Cut five. When we're like, really tired, then we can you know, take a little nap. Sometimes when Miss B was like paying attention to something else, you could eat and it was fun. <laughs> if you don't know the question, you just pretend like your legs are better. I didn't like virtual. You didn't? No. It was no. Terrible. I liked it. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? So they say the McKinsey Group did a study, and they said if you miss a year of school, you, you'd have hybrid school or you have virtual school. It's like Matt, Matt uh, missing three to five months of education. So Joe Biden goes up there. Dave, you want to talk about leadership? It's not saying I want $4 trillion for infrastructure and $6 trillion with a, uh, overall when you add the rescue package in of money that's not coming out of your pocket, money that we don't have as a country. That's not courage. That's not leadership. Even though he's got 59% approval rating, what leadership is is standing up to unions and doing what's right. Here's Tom Cotton, cut 10. The CDC is a thoroughly politicized agency. Uh, most Americans disregard their advice on things like steaks and hamburgers and beers. Uh, increasingly, they should disregard their advice when it comes to school reopening. Schools need to be open. Schools have been open in Arkansas five days a week in person since last August, and it's been largely fine. That's been the case all across the country as well. We shouldn't have a politicized public health bureaucracy like the CDC answering at the beck and call of the teachers unions. We need kids back in school. And I tell you, if Republicans are worth anything, if they sincerely care about kids and winning elections because they do want to get kids back in school, does anybody, anybody doubt that President Trump wanted schools to reopen and this country to reopen? No. Did you like the way he did it? Maybe you didn't. But no one doubted where his head was at. Let these get people back to work. Let's get that vaccine quickly. Let's get the best therapeutics possible. But my goodness, we cannot keep our economy sidelined. We cannot keep kids out of school. I cannot begin to quantify how problematic that is. Meanwhile, while we're trying to get kids back in school in places like New York and Chicago, Governor Ron DeSantis says we are totally open. Nothing, no more restrictions. Cut eight. Folks that are saying that they need to be policing people at this point, if you're saying that, you really are saying you don't believe in the vaccines. You don't believe in the data. You don't believe in the science. We are open, open for business. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.